Hello and welcome again to the Rider Review. This is Eric Rod Rider, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2011 independent sci-fi drama titled Another Earth. Now Another Earth runs for 92 minutes long. It is directed by Mike Cahill. It is produced by Mike Cahill, Britt Marling, Hunter Gray, and Nicholas Schumacher. The script was written by Mike Cahill and Britt Marling. The score was done by a group called Fall For Your Sword. The cinematography was done by Mike Cahill, and the editing was done by Mike Cahill. And the stars of the movie are Britt Marling, William Apother, Jordan Baker, Robin Lord Taylor, Flint Beveridge, Kumar Palana, Diane Sisla, Rupert Reed, and Richard Berenson. When asking about our universe, I often ponder if science fiction stories are custom made to give our inquisitive minds to think outside the box that's in front of our eyes, that there's more out there and we're just all too blind to see. It delves into outrageous scenarios and builds metaphors that reflect what seedlings our future holds in a world that is constantly changing. Take, for example, Blade Runner. It reflects upon the possibility that robotic humanoids can take over our lives and what significance our future has when such an event should take place. And then there's Godzilla in 1954, which raised eyebrows at a time when fear of nuclear warfare in Japan could manifest. In the future, if we don't concentrate on the main attraction, which is a giant mutated lizard. But if nuclear warfare should erupt, what are the possibilities? Maybe we won't see a giant mutated lizard battling other monsters or just destroying a city, but what kind of possibilities does our world have? It's endless. And that's what science fiction does. It suspends our disbeliefs into making us think, this could happen. You don't know what the future holds. And are we prepared? That's kind of like what science fiction is all about. It's not about action. It's not about... You know, little green men wanting to invade Earth and we're going to have an all-out warfare. No. It doesn't have to be that way. It can be provocative and insightful. And it could also raise a lot of philosophy regarding the world we live in. And what possibilities are at stake. It could be good. It could be bad. But either way, it has us thinking. And then you have films like Another Earth, which provides an hyperbolic plot that tries to be part of the wacky world of science fiction, where scientists have been asking if there is a planet similar to Earth that inhabits living creatures like the third planet from the sun. Many people say that there are quite a few habitable planets that's not within our solar system, like, you know, Kepler-186f. They claim that that place could be capable of having inhabitants living there. But it's still just a theory. It's not actually conclusive. But there are planets out there besides Earth that could potentially hold living species together. Maybe just not the other planets in our solar system. No matter how hard they try, there probably was never life on Mars. 
even though scientists sometimes claim to believe that Mars is the next closest planet into into being capable of handling life on that planet. Although scientists still try to come up with conclusions, they seem to always wind up coming up short. But suppose we have to ask ourselves, are we or are we not alone in this universe? I like to think it would be ignorant to say that we are alone. And scientists are trying to come up with the question, if we are alone. Will we ever find out in our time? Possibly. I'm not, but we don't have a direct conclusion unless there is actual proof. So while it's quite admirable that writer-director Mike Cahill and writer-performer Britt Marling managed to collaborate and make a film with little effort, let alone a meager budget, very few films fall into that category, even the bad ones. So, the story goes a little something like this. Britt Marling stars here as an adolescent high school graduate by the name of Rhoda Williams. She definitely has her life on track as she's been accepted to MIT where she hopes to study astrophysics. But her hopes were crushed when she carelessly got drunk and drove her car into another and killed the wife and son of a Yale professor, John Burroughs, played by William Apother, which leads her to be jailed for four years. After her release, her reputation has been shot, and the solar system has took a weird turn as another planet has been found that resembles Earth is coming in closer as it rotates the Sun. They simply don't know any other alternative name to come up with it except they just dub it as Earth 2. Like I said, maybe they should just call it Kepler 186F. That would have made a lot more sense than Earth 2. That's not very riveting, but that's just what the name of the planet is called. Or is it a planet? Maybe it's a maybe it's the key to a parallel universe where everything is reversed. Maybe on this alternative planet I'm not a left handed forty year old. I'm probably still 40 years old, but I'm probably right-handed. Yes, folks, I guess you all know by now, I am a Southpaw. But still, no, I, I digress. Um, how did this Earth come about? I know there's a lot of things that you may have to suspend your disbelief. That, of course, the law of physics are is that if a planet tries to move into our solar system, our gravitational thing, our gravitational system is all screwed up and things like that. But I'm not really going to go into all that, okay? Alright, I'm a journalist. I'm not a, I'm not a physicist, so I won't go into that much further extrapolation of how our solar system works. But, you know, it's there. And it's right there for everyone to see. And it's definitely a sight for sore eyes. I don't know, sometimes I think it's quite surreal to the fact that it's so close 
it almost looks like it's getting closer and closer to crashing in. Imagine if it does collide with... If Earth 2 cl collides with planet Earth. It could cause a lot of catastrophic misfortunes. It's about as close as I could come to any kind of scientific terms. But it's there. And it's for everyone to see. And that you don't need a telescope. Maybe for the better, little is known about this mysterious Earth 2 or this mysterious planet. And for that, we don't really get that much information about its existence. Or if it's hiding some subliminal parallel universe or whatnot. All we know that it's seen through the naked eye and we just simply can't stop staring at it. Drawing conclusions, if this super planet is progressively drawing near as it's gravitating towards annihilating our entire solar system. Could this new planet be habitable like Earth? And if so, are there any familiar species there like us? Every question possible is right there in front of us. But in the end, it remains unanswered. I don't know whether it's done intentionally to leave us in limbo, just so that we can draw our own conclusions, but very little is talked about it in this movie. And that might be one of the major downfalls of this movie. After all my hopes of any redeemable practical discoveries just stay flat. Because the main story back here on Earth is the pitiful Rhoda as she tries to find out more about this John Burroughs, which leads us to him residing in a run-down, condemned farmhouse without a single friend in sight. She tries to apologize for his loss, but just can't utter it out. So she ends up saying that she is a cleaning lady and is offering free cleaning service to him. John agrees, which leads her to being his weekly maid. And they eventually even sometimes get romantically interlocked. Jeez, here we are, thinking of all kinds of possibilities of what's happening on that super earth. And it gets bogged down to pitiful melodrama. And it becomes a story of self-discovery and redemption. And if you're a sci-fi aficionado, chances are you're going to be very disappointed. I was disappointed too. Maybe not to the sense of a good extreme uh, scientific theorists or or fans who love a good sci-fi film but this movie seems to emphasize more of Rhoda's problems as opposed to what's happening on that other planet what does it contain who's living there a shame really to summarize this very narrowly plotted story we have young Rhoda acting like a maid to this perpetually grieving man John while trying to bravely confess that she's the leading contributor to his tragic losses all the while having ample time to gaze at the second earth, thinking if there's another Rhoda Williams, having pursuing her studies at MIT, and living the dreams that she has lost. With the television world fixated on the parallel universes, and through the looking glass stories, 
Another Earth blends nicely with Fox's alternative themed series Fringe. The central theme to this story gives ample time for Rhoda to overlook towards her self-absorbed ways. On this second Earth, is there another Rhoda studying the laws of physics from space? Or is she just looking at herself, dusting attics and scrubbing toilets for another lost soul? Is John's family intact and enjoying the life on this newly found planet? Or is it just the same John Burroughs living in eternal grief without a friend in sight and just shutting himself down from society as a whole? Feeling that if his life is not fulfilled, what point is there of of his well-being. The possibilities were out there. They were just never fully examined. If you think you've got the answers here, <laughs> think again. You may have the material in front of your eyes, you just simply don't have the answers. Maybe it was meant not to be spoon-fed. But then again, why have it there just for the sake of being just metaphoric window dressing? The main admiral thing that makes this film stand out was the very small if there was any budget in making the film and that it just sometimes goes to show you that imagination is still richer than fame and wealth and the movie here depends more on imagination and creativity as opposed to as opposed to garnering big box office bucks even the scenario, even the scenery looked like it was filmed in condemned establishments. The leading stars, William Mapother and Britt Marling, were emotional truly in their performances. Marling definitely shows great depth enough to get Hollywood noticed. Sadly, the scientists within us will be upset that the story was reduced to TV drama on the Lifetime Network about a young girl going through life and the bad choices she's made in hopes that she could rectify from her erroneous ways to make life better for herself. The planet in the background looks nice from afar but it eventually ends up being just bogged as a mere afterthought to a melodrama of sorrow and redemption. So with that in mind, uh, if I was to give this movie a scale out of 10, I would have to give Another Earth a 6. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, go right ahead. Just remember, be kind, be courteous, and don't be rude. And I will be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Rudrider saying keep watching those movies. And I'll see you around. Goodbye.